Hey everyone, this is the next video in the microservices demo series. Here I am going to explain you about the project architecture and the technologies that we are going to use in each and every component of the architecture. And for the example purposes, I am going to take the online shopping portal. So let's go ahead and see the basic architecture of the project. So first of all, we are going to have a product service which is going to have all the information about the product and to store that product information, I'm going to use the MongoDB. And when user is coming to the site, he's uh, just going through the products and all those things. So he should, user should be able to create the cart and wish list. For that, I'm going to create a cart, uh, which is going to uh, contain the information about the uh, cart and wish list. And for the database purpose, I'm going to use the Redis here. Why I'm using Redis here? So because the cart information I'm going to, I'm going to keep that short lib means uh, 30 days 45 days after that i want to clear that so redis gives us the facility to make the data temporary and uh, after the specific time that configurable time it will uh, be it will be deleted automatically and the cart information uh, it ha has to have associated with the user so i also have to have a user management service user management service is going to allow the user to get registered with the system and also will be allowed to do the login and all those things with this with the help of user management service and the all the information about the user we are going to store that in the mysql uh, database so you are seeing here the different database that we are using here so the this is what that uh, i want to simulate the different things that we can use with the different microservices and they are not going to affect uh, the entire architecture and entire behavior of the application right and the next we are going to have the order service to do the final uh, processing of the order uh, the prepare the data for that one and then and the, all the information about the orders we are going to store that in the mysql database and the fraud check frauds nowadays frauds are a common thing and there are third party provider which is which are experts in that uh, that provide the fraud check service i want to simulate that so I'm going to create that fraud check service with the wire mock. We are going to have some dummy data which is uh, going to be validated against. Finally, we are going to have a payment gateway which also I'm going to create with the help of wire mock because uh, the actual integration with the payment gateways needs some keys and some uh, it needs some actual uh, like they are paid services. I mean, so uh, for to simulate that payment gateway part, I'm going to use the wire mock. So if you want to know detail about the wire mock, I already have a detailed playlist on the channel. You can go ahead and check out that. And when we have all these things into picture, so notification is the integral part of the any system nowadays. So I have created a notification service as well. So now showing the interaction uh, among all these services here. So this is how it is going to work here. So user management is here, cart, order, and user management creation is going to take the benefit from the fraud check while creating the user here. And the next interaction is here. So order service is going to take the information about the cart from the cart service. And then finally doing the payment before doing the final payment, the fraud check is going to happen with the interaction of the order service with the fraud check service here, right? These all these are the synchronous communication, but with the notification service, I want to establish a synchronous communication so that it doesn't affect the user for the latency part. This is what it is showing the uh, dotted line are showing the asynchronous communication. For the asynchronous communication, I'm going to set up set up the RabbitMQ messaging framework here. So RabbitMQ server, I'm going to set up and going to have a service to interact with the notification service here. All these services, uh, the product notification user and all these that we have. We are going to use the Spring Boot technology here. And finally comes the client which is going to interact with all the services here. So product, user, cart and order service here. And you see the problem here. When we have the uh, many microservices, when we have to scale our individual services here. So product service is going to have more than one instances at a particular time. So how the client is going to know about the uh, dynamic uh, host and port of the information where it is going to be deployed right so let's make the client uh, let's make the life of the client easy by integrating other components into this system now here we have service registry and discovery and with this service registry and discovery each and individual microservice is going to register itself with the service registry and discovery this cart and order service so anytime anytime uh, 
uh, we go, we are going to change the location of the product service it is going to have a more than one instance one two three services all of these information are going to be stored with the service registry and discovery and when we have uh, more than one instances of an, each a service there comes the problem of spreading the load for example if a request is coming to the service registry and discovery how it is going to decide which instance to send the request by default it is going to do the round robin uh, thing uh, uh, sequentially it is going to spread the load but we if we want to apply the specific load balancer algorithm so uh, then we have to use the load balancer uh, library for that so this service registry and discovery part is going to make the backend services highly available and scalable at runtime now introducing the next part in this architecture that is the api gateway and very important part here this api gateway is going to interact with the service registry and discovery part and the client is going to interact with this api gateway so now you see api gateway advantages of api gateway are is that this is the one point interaction for the clients it gives the security uh, lots of security because now now all the backend services that we have here they can live in the private servers which is not visible to the user at all they are visible to the user through this api gateway and now we have just to secure this api gateway and make this highly available only right for the client purpose there are many advantages with the api gateway one is stop interaction for the client security logging uh circuit breaker uh, and all those things we can uh, implement at one place here and to create these api gateway service registry and discovery we are going to use the spring boot as always uh, as we are doing with the other services and introducing the final part into the here that is centralized configuration and management so each of these individual services are going to have some configuration right so we do not want to change anything in, in the individual service we want to make we want to keep a centralized git repository where we can make the changes and that can be reflected uh, with each and individual services so for that we are going to use the centralized configuration management which is uh, which is going to be a different service in the spring boot itself so that this is the entire architecture now let's restructure the individual service how it is going to look like when we implement it so we have this cart service and order service so all of these services are going to have a crud operation so basically these are the basic endpoints that they are going to have apart from other endpoints as per the need of the business to track the health status of each and individual service we are going to have the actuator which is going to track the health of each and individual service and to interact with the individual services and to document that one we are going to use the swagger so it's very efficient and to do the individual service interaction swagger is going to help a lot and there are going to service to service communication happening right so cart service is going to call the order service and there may be instances uh, sometimes that order service is uh, down at all there is some internal issue that is happening in order service that will be propagated to the cart service here there will be delay in response to handle all these cases we are going to implement the circuit breaker in the communication uh, while this communication is happening so this is how uh, the individual service structure is going to look like coming to the next slide that we have the data archival and processing sometimes we need the real time data storage uh, real time data streaming to other part of the system that can be used with the uh, artificial intelligence machine learning and data processing part and all the big words that you can think of so for that streaming for that transfer of data i'm going to use the kafka kafka server running a separate kafka service which is going to take the data from the individual services that we have here and transfer it to the other system as per the need right coming to the next part log monitoring all the individual microservices that we have they are going to generate some amount of logs that we can we have to use uh, in case of any latency delay or any error is happening in the system so for that we are going to use the elk and um, i hope you know the elk elastic it stands for elastic search log stash and kibana this is the keywords in the elk so this is the information that beats is going to collect the 
uh, log information from the individual uh, microservices that we have log stash is going to aggregate the data and process that one elastic search is going to use the uh, indexing and storage part and finally kibana is there to uh, give us the ui to analyze and visualize the data uh, so coming to the next one that is the deployment part i'm going to deploy the each and individual service into the aws and see how we can uh, use when we have deployed the uh, individual microservices in, into the aws now i'm going to also explain you how you can create the docker images out of the microservices and you can push that into the docker registry and pull that and you start your microservices directly from the docker images and i'm also going to explain you the use case of the kubernetes how we can use this kubernetes so finally coming to the end of the slide that is writing the front end part for the actual interaction of the user so we are going to write the that react application so that's all about this video uh, for all the links, uh, list of topics in this series, you can always head to this link and see all the information. So I'll see you in the next video with the next part of the series. Till then, take care, stay safe. Bye-bye.